Hi guys, it's Natalie here again and I'm going to show you a video of another card made with the new release uh, June products from Neat and Tangled. Um, I am in love with the Beach Day uh, stamp set and it's so cute. So that's where I started from uh, with my inspiration. And the other one that I really loved is this Rice Patties stencil. Now it's called Rice Patties but for me when I first saw it it really um, suggested to me more of a water type of scene and so I think these two sets or these two products are going to go together really well. Now I've started um, with a couple of base pieces for my card. I've just got some white card stock uh, and then this green panel that I'm going to put in the background and then a blue panel that's going to go more in the foreground. And um, so I'm going to stencil the design of the washer onto uh, this blue background. I find sometimes it's easier to get a bit of a smoother coverage if I put some plastic underneath um, where I'm working and also it protects my work surface. And then I'm just going to stick it down in place with some washi tape. Uh, down the bottom because I'm not going to quite cover up the very bottom edge. Um, I've just got some ink here. Now uh, I saw somebody else do this trick and I wanted to share it with you um, is uh, to do some stenciling with um, a makeup brush instead of you know I'm sure you've seen of course you can get those stencil brushes which are um, specifically made for stenciling and um, I'm not suggesting that this does a good a job as those. If you've got those, I think um, they'd be really, really fabulous. But they're also um, a little bit costly. And I just got this makeup brush from like the discount store from, I think it literally cost me $2. And I'm just holding, um, because this one's, you know, it's definitely not natural fibers. It's very synthetic, it's very cheap. So uh, it's quite fluffy and I'm just kind of holding it down near uh, the bristles so that I can get uh, it just to sort of direct downwards, I guess, rather than going all over the place. But I just find that this gives a really nice soft coverage um, as opposed to, I guess, because I'm not necessarily a pro at using those um, foam brushes. And so when I use those, a lot of the time, I don't find that I can blend very well and I get lots of lines. And so that's just me, but um, you can see how this is giving a really nice uh, soft finish. And it is gonna be different, like I d it's not gonna give um, as crisp lines. And that's not always gonna suit your purpose, but for this purpose, because it's, you know, this water scene, then um, I think it's fine that the lines are a little bit blurry um, because these bristles do tend to get underneath a little bit. And you can see that I'm kind of holding the stencil down in place. But that's giving a really nice effect. So that's my trick number one is instead of uh, purchasing those fancy stencil brushes, if you don't quite have the budget for it or if you just want a quick hack, then you can use a makeup brush. So that's my background done. And so you can see that's gonna go really nicely there. And so now um, it's time to paint my characters or color in my characters. Let's just put this to one side. Uh, again, I'm just gonna keep um, this plastic here to protect my work surface. And I've already stamped out um, the bits and pieces that I want. So I've got the hippo and the sandcastle and the bird and the sun. And I am, um, again, you know, I'm not, as I said to you in my first video, I'm not a Copic colorer. I'm not a colorer at all. So this is another cheap uh, hack to just get some color uh, on there without having to invest in some other products that you, um, you know, have a very specific purpose. So I'm using uh, my dye inks. Just my ordinary, uh, I use these Studio Calico Color Theory dye inks. And they do need to be um, the dye inks because they're water soluble. 
and I'm going to start by just getting a bit of a base coat down. So I'm not very imaginative when it comes to colours. I'm going to do the hippo grey because that's what colour they should be. Um, so I'm starting off with my lightest grey and you can see I just, I don't even get a palette. I just literally smoosh some into the lid of my paint, of my ink pad and then I can pick it up with my water pen. And so I've stamped these images onto watercolour paper because uh, that way it will, you know, blend a little bit better and um, give you you know a bit more of a professional look without having to be professional and that's that's what I need I don't I don't have the technique I don't have the skills so I need the cheats right so I usually um, pop some water down um, onto the area that I want colored first and then add the ink in and it just gives a really nice um, even coverage and I'm not being overly careful because I'm going to have to do a, a few layers um, to get it looking really nice. Uh, and while I'm going with this colour, I'll do the gull's wing as well. Or in my mind, he's a seagull. And I just have a wet wipe on standby just to clean off my brush. Oh, and I forgot her tummy. So I am going to colour all of these images using um, this same kind of technique. And when the first layer is dried, then I will go back in and add um, some more high highlights or uh, low lights or whatever, more layers with um, the darker colours, just to show you, for example. So this is a darker grey, and then I can always go back in and add some more. Um, where it needs a, a bit more colour and because you often find that when the colour dries it's a lot lighter than what you imagined it was going to be initially and so you often or I often find that I need to go back and add um, more colour and more layers. So um, like usual uh, I'm going to just pop the rest of this colouring in fast forward so that you don't get too bored. <laughs> going to do to finish this off is to use the new um, sequins they're called sherbet 
but to me when I saw them it really just reminded me of the colors of sand as well which again just fits with this um, theme so I'm going I'm using um, a thick clear gel glue um, and I just want an edge of sequins where um, sort of this edge of sand will be so I'm putting it on quite thick because I want a really good coverage um, of sequins here along this edge and then I'm going to just sprinkle them on really liberally and sort of see where they land and then mush lots more in as well and um, you know it uses a lot of sequins let's be honest but so do shaker cards and I just think that this is so cool so I'm just making sure all these uh, like all the glue bits are covered and that all the sequins that are on there are stuck down so just sometimes just takes a little bit of rearranging and I want to kind of tuck them in underneath the die cuts um, and not overlap them too much because I want to really show them off as well. And there we go. So that is my card um, today. I'm still debating. Um, there's a bit of white space up the top there and I'm, I'm wondering if I need to put uh, a bit of a sentiment in there so if my finished card pictures have got a sentiment there you know that's why um, but otherwise uh, that's my card today and the tricks that I wanted to teach you or share with you is about maybe using um, different products uh, in different ways so instead of getting a stencil brush you can use a makeup brush and instead of uh, using water paints that you can just use your ordinary dye inks uh, to color in your images as well so I hope you found that super fun and I will see you again next time Bye.